In today's video, you will learn how to make a fluid level indicator. I had a question presented to me a few days ago by email regarding a fuel sending unit that used a thermistor for the fuel gauge. And as a direct result of that question that was sent to me, I drew up this schematic here for a fluid level indicator. Now the reason why I thought this would be a very useful circuit is because I was thinking of my own circumstances. Where I live, we have city water as well as rain water which is collected in large cisterns in the ground. Now the problem is that you really have no way of knowing how much water has collected in those large tanks in the ground. So that's where I came up with this circuit. Now this circuit could be used for a lot of other different purposes, but for what I designed it for is to monitor the water level in our cisterns. So rather than have to lift up a lid to see how much water is inside of a tank, I designed this circuit, which you would use a rod. It could be a plastic PVC pipe, half inch. And you're going, you're going to attach thermistors, just like you see here, just to show you on this stick. All right? Each one of these thermistors would be soldered to a two-conductor, 22-gauge telephone cable. It's a nice round cable for this. You would slide some heat shrink over the cable, solder onto each thermistor, and you would put a little bit of silicone sealant on the bottom of the thermistor by the legs, allowing a little bit to go maybe one-third of the way up slide the heat shrink back over, heat it up, and let the silicone cure, and that would be waterproof. You would make four of those. They're very easy to make, doesn't take too much time. Now say you have a six foot deep tank that's collecting rainwater. What you would do, the first thermistor would be located one and a half feet off the bottom of the tank. The next one would be positioned at three feet, and then the next one four and a half, and then right around six feet, you would have the upper thermistor. Ordinarily, you would use a thermistor to detect air temperature and the value will change. If it's hotter, the air temperature, the value will drop. If it's colder, the value will rise. You'll get a higher resistance. In this case, what's going on is you're going to supply a small current. We're going to have a 120 ohm resistor going to each one of these thermistors and they're going to feed through each thermistor to ground. And what's going to happen when this current flows through the thermistor, it's going to generate heat. These aren't going to get hot, but they're going to get very warm. When they get warm, the resistance value is going to decrease, causing the voltage that was here to drop. So this thermistor right here right now is not being submerged. So what's going to happen when the circuit comes on, this thermistor will start to get warm. And in the process of getting warm, the resistance level is going, to is going to drop and the voltage at this point here is also going to drop because you're letting more of that current go to ground now because of a lower resistance value. We have a reference voltage which is set by the 620 ohm and the 1.2K which is in series with a 2K potentiometer. This is roughly 9.6 volts you're going to want to have a regulated power supply for 12 volts for this circuit. All of the non-inverting inputs, as you can see here, the 1 minus, the 2 minus, the 3 minus, and the 4 minus, are all connected together and being fed the voltage from the voltage divider. So each one of these is going to have a reference voltage which is set at roughly 9.6, and you can adjust that. Now, the first thermistor is going to be connected to the upper LED. If you look at the breadboard, you will see there's, that's the upper one and that's the lower. When the tank is full, every LED will be illuminated. As the level drops, you'll see three, then two, then one. And if it's empty, everything will be off. From the first thermistor, you're going to go to the one positive. And then the second one goes to the two positive, the third goes to the three positive, and the fourth to the four positive. The first thermistor is, go is going to be connected to the first output, which goes to the upper indicator, the red LED. And I have a 2.7K that limits the current flowing into the LED. 
Each one of these is a 2.7K, just like each one of these resistors here is a 120 ohm. You could choose any color for the LEDs. To me, I just rather have them all red. Now, once the circuit is powered up, if the tank is empty, you will see each of the LEDs illuminate for about five to eight seconds, and then they will turn off one by one. Now, the reason why the LEDs all went off is because each one of these thermistors are heating up. And as they heat up, their resistance levels are declining, allowing the voltage here to drop. Now, once this voltage at this point here, at the junction between the resistors and the thermistors, drops below the reference voltage, which in this case is 9.6 volts, then the output will go to ground. So right now, so we'll do an example on the first one. This one is not submerged in liquid. The resistance level dropped, causing the voltage to drop, and it's now below the reference voltage. The output is now connected internally to ground. Because that output is now internally connected to ground, this LED will extinguish because the voltage is being shunted to ground. So whatever voltage came in on the 2.7K, you lost all of it when this got triggered by this thermistor. And it works the same for each and every one. Take a peek at the circuit. It's a little crowded, but as you'll see in a minute, it works perfectly fine. Now because these thermistors have not been soldered to the telephone cable with the heat shrink tubing, and the silicone sealant to isolate the leads from the water, I'm going to have to demonstrate by touching a damp sponge to each one of these to show you as if the water level is rising. As soon as the circuit is powered up, the LEDs, all four, will light up and they will go out probably one by one in about eight or ten seconds as the thermistors are heating because they are not submerged. Okay, let's apply power. See that they're all on. Now if you touch each thermistor, you will feel that they're getting warm. Each one is warm. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to take this damp sponge, it's not cold, it's just water on it, and I'm going to touch it to the lower thermistor. And this is simulating that water has been put into the tank. As you can see, it's on. All right, and if I move to the one above it, the same thing, that one will come on. As you can see, the second one now illuminated, which is right there. Now I'm going to go up to the third one, just to simulate like the water has reached the third one. As you can see, the third one is now illuminated, and I'm right on the third one. Now we're going to do the last one, the upper. I'm now at the top. The third will go off because I'm off of it now. And that indicates a full tank. Now I just demonstrated how each one works properly. As it gets submerged, it will come on. Now you notice that each one, when I removed the sponge, went back off again. Now if this was a tank that had water in it and it was half filled, the bottom two LEDs would be on to let you know it's half full. Now if the tank is three quarters full, you'll have all three reds illuminated from the bottom up. Three quarters full. If it's a full tank, every single LED will be on. That's how it works. It works very well as long as you do a good job with your 22 gauge telephone wire with the heat shrink and the sealant around each thermistor. Take a nice PVC pipe, half inch, Nylon tie each thermistor in position in the tank and route the wires out to the control box where this circuit will be located and you will be good to go. If you have any other questions, 
please post them in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it thumbs up and also subscribe. Thank you very much.